last uh, had a few requests to do a little bit more detail on the solar panels that I did for the RV here. Um, let me preface it by saying I am not an electrician. I'm not an electrical engineer. I uh, there are no circuit breakers, fuses, resistors, none of that involved. This is a very simple setup just to charge my batteries for the RV. Uh, be it right or wrong, this is the way we did it. It works great for us. We use uh, our TV and DVD player at night, our lights. I make coffee in the morning, and they charge back up the next day. So this is how I put it all together. Um, these are two 100-watt solar panels. They're, they're uh, Renogy. And they'll put out about six amps, five to six amps each. I don't know if you can see that label or not. Uh, I bought them, the, uh, one of them I bought on Amazon because I had a coupon. And the other one I bought from off of eBay because I got a discount with it. So shop around for them. It's from the same company. I bought one out of their Amazon store and one off their eBay store. So, I got them for around $130, $135 each. These, they come with the uh, MC4 connectors. And I went to Missouri Wind and Power, Wind and Solar, and I bought uh, all the cabling that I needed from them. And I run these in parallel. Uh... Parallel will double the amps and the watts, but it leaves the volts the same because I have to have a 12 volt system for the RV. So I run them in parallel, so I have 200 watts or about 10 amps in good sunshine going to the charge controller inside the RV. It's way more than what I needed. Uh, to charge those batteries, but my plan when I bought it, I knew that eventually out here, when we get set up out here and move, I'm going to use one of these panels and a battery for the pump house, and I'm going to use a panel and a battery for the chicken coops to run lights during the winter and, you know, things like that. So the panels will be used in other places. That's why I went ahead and bought 100 watt ones. Uh, instead of getting the Harbor Freight deal. Uh, but I have them coming into, I just drilled a hole in the RV. The wires going in to the charge controller. These are the wires coming out of the charge controller down to the batteries. Which are also wired in parallel. You can see I've got the positive to positive and negative to negative on the two batteries they're they're matching uh ever start max uh, deep cycle batteries each one has i think they're 115 amp hours so by running them in parallel parallel like this i wind up with 230 amp hours uh and we never run out of uh, juice at night. The I think my charge controller, the lowest I've seen it go and stay was around 12.2 volts uh, out of the 12.5. So it works really well. Two of them helps a lot. The inverter that's in the RV, it's a, I think they call it a converter. Uh, because it runs all the, the 12 volt stuff. These batteries will run the lights, uh, the furnace fan, the water pump, the refrigerator, you know, all that will run off a of 12 volt, but what's in the RV, the converter in the RV will not convert from 12 volt to 110 amp uh, for the electricity 
everything that runs off a 12 volt these batteries take care of so I had to get these batteries were a hundred dollars a piece at Walmart and I got a two-year warranty on them so after about 22 months I'll take them back and get two new ones hopefully um, but to get 110 power inside the RV I didn't want to tear into the control panels underneath the seats so I just bought this inverter this 2000 watt inverter uh, I think that was around forty dollars I got it off of uh, eBay as well it's got three ballots here I wish it had a 12 volt like cigarette lighter one but it doesn't this works just fine I only needed maybe a 600 watt or a seven, you know, 800 watt inverter, but I didn't know till I started getting into this. And last night we were watching TV, the DVD player, a fan, the lights. I mean, again, you know, I had no problems with anything I had. Um, I've got this wired up, so. I've got, I'm pulling negative off of one battery, positive off of the other battery. And the same with my charge controller. I've got the positive going into one battery, the negative going into the other one. And I'm pulling the inverter and the inverter are both on the same terminal. Every video you watch on YouTube, everything you read off of Google has a different way of doing it I have no idea what the quote-unquote right way is of doing it but this works for us just fine uh, I don't know why it wouldn't but that's our setup I leave the inverter out here rather than cut another hole in the RV and try to you know run wires in for it I leave the inverter set out here and I bring an extension cord out of that window Drop it down, plug it in, and boom, we have everything we need in there. I'm not going to be messing around in that control panel. But if the generator is running in the RV, it can convert the alternating current to 12 volt to run the lights and everything. But it cannot convert my 12 volt power over to uh, AC. <clears throat> so what happens when the generator's running, it will charge these batteries slowly, uh, nothing like the panels do. But you have to have the generator running, plugged into shore power, or have an inverter to run all the 110 appliances and light, you know, whatever in the coach itself. And this was already, you know, I just have the... the positive again coming off of one battery the negative off the other battery going into the coach uh, that sends it up to the power center inside the RV but that's how simple it is it's not a, a difficult setup it's real simple uh, it works for us just fine and I'll show you the charge controller I've got This too I bought off of eBay. It's a 30 amp charge controller. And it's a Sunforce. And it works really well. It tells me what I need to know. It doesn't tell me anything extra. Uh, right now I've got 9 volts coming in from the solar panels to the batteries. And my batteries are already, well, they're up to 14.1 already today after using it all night. And this will shut down, you know, it'll drop it down to a trickle charge once the batteries get full. So all week long it sits here and charges back up. But I think I paid maybe $60 for that charge controller off of eBay. So that's it. That's our setup. 
and uh, like I said, we have lights. We have lights with the inverter. Look. Holy See crap! That? You got a light in there. Don't be burning my batteries down. Turn I'm not. It shuts off. Oh, it's, it's automatic. Switch. Yes. See, because when you open this one, it doesn't come on. But you open this one. Holy comes crap! On. Hey. <laughs> We learn new stuff about this RV every day. Uh, that's pretty neat. It also runs my control panel up here. And I'm trying to add water. Uh, we don't have enough in it right now to try it. But my pump, if you hear it, you can hear the pump trying to work. Once I get water filled up in the tank, we should have water. But that works off a of 12 volt. Um, that's pretty much it. That's how simple it is to use solar to charge your RV batteries. The stand for the solar panels I made out of some extra 2x4s I had at home. Uh, keeps them up off the ground. Keeps the critters off of them. And... Uh, they hold them up this has been through, we've had some serious storms out here and some serious wind and we haven't lost the panel yet they're not screwed down or anything they're just leaning in there but it works and you have to have a flamingo uh, the pink flamingo guards our solar panels so nobody will take them it scares them off but that's it that's the solar system in a nutshell Hope it helps.